In this video, I will rank all the historical movies of 2022 that I have seen. I will rank them in these 5 tiers. These are the tiers I also used in the same movie ranking video last year. Let's see the 16 historical movies in alphabetical order. Against the Ice is an Icelandic Danish historical survival movie on Netflix. It is about the 1909 Alabama expedition of Denmark, which was attempting to disprove the United States claim to northeastern Greenland and prove that Greenland is indeed one piece of land. Game of Thrones star Nicolai Costa Waldo plays one of the main roles. I am not the biggest fan of survival movies, but I really liked this one. It is a good and exciting movie, good story, great acting, maybe the pacing was not the best. I think I should put this in the decent tier. Then we have right away one of the best movies of 2022. It's official. All Quiet on the Western Front. It is a German movie set during World War I. It is based on the 1929 novel written by Erich Maria Remarque based on his own experience in the war. The novel already had an iconic movie adaptation from 1930 which won an Academy Award. I saw the movie too and I have to say that this 2022 movie is on par with it. I think it is an outstanding, extraordinary and gut-wrenching movie. I absolutely loved it. I even liked the modifications made to the original material. I root for this at the Oscars. It belongs to the highest tier, of course. Then, another Oscar nominee this year, Argentina 1985. It is an Argentine drama that follows the events surrounding the 1985 trial of the Juntas, which prosecuted the ringleaders of Argentina's last civil military dictatorship. Courtroom dramas are usually not my cup of tea, but this movie, it is truly stunning, shocking, fantastic. The story is great, the acting is outstanding. It is nominated for Best International Feature Film at the Oscars and it won the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film, beating even All Quiet on the Western Front, which is not a small feat. I will put this in the best category too. The next one is also an award-winning movie, Corsage. It is an international co-production between Austria, Germany, Luxembourg and France and it is about Empress Elizabeth Sisi of Austria. It tells about one year in her life, the year she turns 40. It is a very unique art film, a lot of things seen on the screen should be interpreted as allegories and not literally. I liked this movie very much, I think the portrayal was Finally, a decent portrayal of CC and Vicky Creeps' acting was great. Everything about the movie, the writing, the design, the acting, the directing, was very good. So, I think I should put this in not the highest tier, but just below that. Then we have another war movie, Devotion. It is an American biographical war film about the comradeship between two naval officers during the Korean War. I think I have never seen any movie about the Korean War before. This movie could have been shorter and I think it should have focused much more on the war itself and the action because we are past half of the movie when they reach Korea. Otherwise it was a good movie. So it goes into the decent tier. Then we have a French movie, Eiffel, about the famous engineer Gustave Eiffel and the construction of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The main roles are played by Romain Duris and Emma Mackey. Well, those parts of the movie that focused on the Eiffel Tower and the construction were quite good, but those that focused on the love story were very cliche and boring. The problem is that the love story parts are the majority, sadly. So I have to say that this movie could have been better, much better. There is another Emma Mackey movie on this list, Emily, which is a biographical drama about Emily Bronte. Well, I am a big fan of the Brontes. I have read 
Wuthering Heights twice, I think. And I have to say that I have seen this movie like three times already. I just love it so much. I think it is an excellent tribute to Emily and Wuthering Heights. Also, Emma Mackey is just fabulous in this role. Honestly, she should deserve an Oscar for it. So this movie will be our third one in the highest tier. Then a Korean war movie, Hansan Rising Dragon. It is about the 1592 Battle of Hansan, fought between the Koreans and the Japanese. It is the sequel to Admiral Roaring Currents, which was a very successful movie, I think. It is the highest grossing movie ever in South Korea. I think Hansan is a good movie, especially visually. The battle was spectacular, but it is not as good as the first movie, The Admiral, so I think this belongs in the decent tier. The next movie is Medieval. It is a Czech movie about the legendary Czech general Jan Žižka. It is set just prior to the Hussite Wars and it tells the story of how Žižka became a famous military commander. It is the most expensive Czech movie ever made and I think it shows. It has very high production values, the action scenes, the battle scenes are very good. The story is lacking a bit sometimes. That is not the strongest point of the movie. Mm, I think it also goes into the decent category. Then we have a spy thriller, Munich, The Edge of War. It is a German-British movie on Netflix. It focuses on the 1938 Munich Agreement and it centers around a British and a German diplomat. The main roles are played by Jeremy Irons, George McKay and Janis Niewerner. I think it is a very good, exciting movie. I was on the edge of my seat till the very end of the movie. The acting is super good. This has to go into the very good tier. The next movie is set just five years afterwards, Operation Miss Me a British war drama about a deception operation of the Second World War to disguise the 1943 Allied invasion of Sicily. I think the original story was quite interesting, a very good movie material, and the movie is not bad, but sometimes it was slow and predictable. The main storyline was great, but I think there was a totally unnecessary love storyline in it. Well. I think it is somewhere between could have been better and decent. Well, let's be positive and put it in decent. Then I think the most unique movie on this list, RRR, Rise, Roar, Reward. An Indian movie about two Indian revolutionaries and their fight against the British Raj in the 1920s. This is the most expensive Indian movie ever and as far as I know it received very, very wide international acclaim and fame. It was nominated for a Golden Globe. Actually, three out of five movies nominated as Best Foreign Film and the Golden Globes were historical movies, which is like, wow, that's very rare. So I gotta say this was a very good year for international historical movies. Anyways, this movie didn't quite captivate me as it did others. I think it is not even among the best Indian movies I have seen, but it is decent. The next one is a German TV movie, The Conference. It is a reenactment of the real Wannsee Conference held in Germany in 1942 by Nazi officials to determine the so-called final solution. The movie strives to be the perfect reenactment of the conference. It is set in a meeting room and the whole plot is that the Nazis are discussing their plans, basically. While I have to mention that it is a critically very acclaimed movie in Germany and in Austria, I didn't really find this a good movie. I don't know, it was pretty boring to me. A bit more plot and action would have worked better for me. The whole movie was just sitting and talking. And for that, it wasn't interesting enough. Especially when you know the awful outcome of the discussions. So. I think this movie belongs to the could have been better tier. The next movie is The Northman, which I watched in the cinema in the spring. 
It is an American epic historical action thriller film based on the Scandinavian legend of Prince Hamlet, you know, the legend that inspired Shakespeare's play. It has an all-star cast with Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, Anya Taylor-Joy, Ethan Hawke, Willem Dafoe and Björk. I enjoyed this movie very much. I think it had a very unique atmosphere, especially watching it in the cinema. I think the story, the acting, the design, the effects were all very great. So this movie belongs to the very good tier. Then another war drama, a Danish one, The Shadow in My Eye. It is set in 1945 during the bombing of Copenhagen and the main characters are children of a school. Honestly, this is one of the most underrated movies of 2022, in my opinion. It is just excellent. I have no idea why it has not got more fame. Alexander Zen, Ivar from Vikings, plays a main role and he's outstanding and so are all the child actors. So, this is going to be the fourth movie in the highest tier. Then, the last movie on this list, The Woman King. For me, this was the most anticipated historical movie of the year. I was really looking forward to seeing such an epic historical film about the African warrior women. And I think this movie is a very good epic historical movie with a great, although somewhat predictable story, great characters and great acting. Viola Davis is tremendous in this movie. She received a Golden Globe nomination for it and I can understand why. So, this also goes into the second tier. So, I think this looks very good. It was a very good year for historical movies, in my opinion. Much better than for historical TV series. What do you think about these movies? Let me know in the comments.